Hey, welcome back. I'm Chris Chase with the Western Flyer Foundation. And in this episode, it's all about hull planking. Hey, sorry about the interruption, but I was sitting here editing the video and I thought I'd stop before I got too far into this episode. And I just wanted to acknowledge the health crisis confronting the entire world. We're all trying to get through this together and together we'll get through it. So slow down, help out a friend and help out a stranger. The old saying, it takes a village, really rings true in moments like this. The Flyer Project is moving forward. We've got a reduced crew working on the boat, but I'll continue to make some episodes and keep everybody entertained. But let's get back to that video. Thanks. Before we dive into the episode, I wanted to announce a new segment on this channel. It's called the Two Minute Tour. I get a lot of emails asking for more information, more content, more, more what's going on. So I thought once a week, I'll cruise around the boat with my camera, grab a couple of minutes of footage, edit it up, get a what's new, what's different, kind of a sound blip from one of the guys, and put that up weekly. And that should start next week. But in this episode, it's all about hull planking. They put the first hull plank on the boat just a few days before Christmas 2019. And on February 28th, 60 days later, they put the whiskey plank on. That's pretty impressive. 5,000 linear feet of two inch thick hull planking in 60 days, wow. The wood we ended up purchasing to replank the Western Flyer was an African mahogany called Sipo. We bought it rough cut at two and three eighths of an inch thick through Edensaw Woods here in Port Townsend. Some of the logs we purchased were up to 40 feet long and almost 60 inches wide. We bought it rough cut because it actually came air dried. That way as it dried over a couple of years, we bought it a few years ago, that it was actually able to shrink down, maybe lose an eighth of an inch of value, but still would have enough wood to let the shipwright surface it down to the dressed thickness of two inches. Sipo has an average weight of about three and a half pounds per board foot. This meant that some of the larger planks we got from Edensaw weighed almost 800 to 1,000 pounds. And moving this wood would present the first major hurdle in the planking process. How do you move the raw material from one place to another when it weighs that much? The crew was able to use the overhead crane, they used forklifts, they covered all of the sawhorses in a hard plastic called UHMW, which is extremely slippery. but probably the most ingenious time saver was the Lazy Susan that was installed underneath the main planer. This allowed the roughed out planks to be fed through the planer going one direction, taking that initial pass, spin the planer around, and with little effort, send the board back out through the planer, taking it down to that finished thickness. <laughs> That's brilliant. Once the crew got a handle on the moving and the surfacing of all the raw material, it was time to what shipwrights call line out the planking. This is a process of dividing the girth of the boat at each layout station to accommodate the, in our case, 25 hull planks. We did record the original hull planking widths at each station before any of that original planking was removed. This gave the shipwrights a starting point, but this is something we do rarely in the repair industry, almost never. I'm going to let Tim explain how he laid out the hull right, planking. So explain this uh, plank chart you're looking at over your shoulder. This is a layout of the entire boat yeah. on one side, or both sides, both they're sides, symmetrical. Yeah. Well, the thing, yeah, you want it to be symmetrical and you want to plan where the butts are and not stack them all up in one place. So this is basically a flattened out version of the, the boat. We just took the girths off the keel and laid the, laid the widths out, so it's all laid out flat. Like if you just un, basically. So then, after I kind of lined out on the hull and knew 
what, what my wits were going to be, I lined out what was going to be a master line, which is a kind of, you probably can't see it there, but it's a blue ink line that runs through there. And then there's 11 planks below the shear plank there, and those are the uppers. So then I just drew those in. And then below the master line, I had the lower planks, and there's six of those, which all break into uh, steeler planks at the back to fill up that place where there's more girth. And then we had the garbard and the three broads. And then it was just a matter of knowing what my material was gonna be, the links, and then going through with this, made a little plank scale. And so the frames are all laid out here. So I just put a little dot where each frame was gonna be because you don't wanna have the butts closer than like four spaces. And then the goal was to not have any frame with more than one dot. We need a fishing. Just like with steaming frames, the planks that need to be steamed are cooked to 200 plus degrees for about two hours. And just like when framing, the crew has a limited amount of time to worry them into place before they cool. They get them out of the box, they secure the hood into the boat, and they begin to worry it down into place, clamping and edge setting as they go. I've always said anyone can be taught to pattern and make planks, but it takes a shipwright to push, pull, clamp, jack, and muscle them into place. It can take a lifetime to learn all the tricks needed to get a piece of two inch hull planking to settle into its final resting place.
To make the planking phase of the project even go faster, the shipwrights modified two standard tools. Most people think of planks on a boat like this, with all its complex changing bevels, would be cut out using a bandsaw. Not true with this job. All the planks that were installed were cut out using a modified 10 inch drop foot saw. And to speed things up even faster, the caulking bevels were cut onto the edge of the plank using a modified router jig. This meant that a 25 to 35 foot plank could be patterned, laid out, cut out, and installed in a matter of hours. At the crew's peak, they were making and installing 18 to 20 planks a week. That was with a six person crew with a 30 foot plank average. And to answer the question on the tip of your tongue, what are we using to fasten the planking to the frames? The answer is a number 20 by 4 inch silicon bronze wood screw. The flyer was originally built using galvanized cut nails, and the nails are still available, but we chose to make the huge upgrade to bronze. Initially more expensive, but when you factor in the nails are slower to install, coupled with the life expectancy of the bronze, which should have lasted years longer than the nails, the bronze was an easy choice. Hey, thanks for taking the time to watch episode 16 on Plank and the Western Flyer. I have a great time making these videos and I love sharing the project with everybody. I hope you're enjoying watching them at home. And I'm going to start in on those two minute tours, probably starting next week. So look for those in your inbox or your notification box, I guess it is. And those will be in between these longer once a month episodes. But until next time, thanks for watching the video.